at Convocation of 2014, Bruce Shepard stood on stage and he said uh, that we're going to spend the next year raising the critical cultural consciousness on campus. As a result, the President's Task Force really took it upon ourselves to really delve into that and say, what, what, what does that actually look like and how do we lean on our own talents here on campus to address that issue? And so the thought was, honor everybody's work that we're already doing. There are so many folks doing this already. We just want to lift those folks up and, and respect the work that they're doing, but also widen the doors and, and give more opportunity to, the, uh, to other folks to learn from some of these faculty members and staff members that they don't have access to. So we've we created this workshop and this, these menus to do just that. Both because of my role on the council as well as uh, being part of the Dean of Students initiative on cultural competency and the staff training we're doing there, that uh, that's the way that I got engaged. Uh, Nick has been working with uh, uh, Ted Pratt and also with our committee on the kind of cultural competence training that we're doing there. Christina Van Winkerden chairs that and as a result of that we got to hear what Nick was unfolding. I was a part of the luncheon where he asked various people across campus to become involved to suggest ideas, uh, things that they might teach and I, I was eager. I think it's really important to find yourself in the diversity conversation first. It's, uh, we refer sometimes to the zoo approach of learning about diversity and learning about them and who diverse folks are, when in fact we are all diverse. We all bring something to the diversity topic and to, to the diversity conversation. So to locate yourself first and, and then go from there I think is, is absolutely vital. My mom used to always tell me as I was growing up as a kid, if a person doesn't know, you can't do. So even as a professor, and you can study, you can be the top of your game in psychology. But if you've never been in a certain community and now you're exposed to those populations now, it's, it's beyond theory, it's practice. And if you have never been encounter, encountered that group, you really don't know how to exactly deal with them because it's not a book anymore. Now it's reality. So by us presenting this as a day-to-day -day reality for faculty, staff, and students, we better prepare people for that. And when I guess if you don't stick your foot in the water, you would never know. Uh, but um, we're all human beings, and all of our lives do matter. And when we're indifferent to other human beings, when we're insensitive to the concerns and the lives of other human beings, we're dehumanizing them. And when we show that lack of concern, that lack of interest, we're also dehumanizing ourselves. Like when we talk about racism, when we talked about the plantation system under slavery, um, it obviously dehumanized black people, but the slave holder was, was also dehumanizing himself, you know? And all of the other kind of practices that happened, you know, in the slave quarters after dark and, and, and the ugliness and the nastiness of all of that, uh, uh, you know, you actually, uh, diminishing yourself as a human being at the same time and so when you start to turn that around and take an interest and celebrate our diversity and embrace it when, when you start to do that you'll be surprised at the warm feelings that you get out of it okay um, it's it, it's good to do good and it feels good to do good I think the ability to have these conversations about critical cultural consciousness um, are a life skill, fundamentally. We live in a complex world and we need to be able to talk about that effectively and respectfully. I think participants will really be able to gain the skills, insight, and courage to be able to efficiently and effectively engage with these really difficult conversations with their colleagues, with their peers, with their students, and with the system overall to actually be able to bring these conversations into actions and really start making change. When you look at the, the fourth concept in, in the, uh, the learning process through the uh, Campus Equity and Inclusion Forum, and this call to action, I think a lot of us have things that we could learn uh, from others. There are so many folks on campus who are doing things so well, and we haven't always had the forum to get together and learn from each other. So whether it's uh, learning to add diversity into your curriculum, 
or to supervise in a way or evaluate an employee in a, in a way that, is, that enhances diversity and inclusion on campus, I think those things are really gonna come together through, through these workshops. People becoming engaged, and this is something that has happened for me and continues to happen, is that they get a passion for this kind of learning, um, and it's lifelong. You're never done with it. You get to continue to learn, and so it's passionate that way. And then secondly, that it fuels you to want to make positive change. The main thing that they're gonna get is how can I transform my uh, classroom climate or my work climate in a way that is that it integrates everyone, not just one group, but it integrates everyone. It actually teaches people how to build community. And I believe that in order for us to really get it together and learn how to work with, with people of different races, different sexual orientation, religion, and so forth, we have to first learn how do we build a community with each other. And I believe that every workshop that's gonna be presented is going to teach us how to actually do that. I'm getting passionate, man. It's a juicy topic for me. <laughs> I think this is going to have a significant impact. 